if you're not familiar with where we are in the Word, we're over in Isaiah's writings, chapter 9, verse 6, and uh, this scripture is used all the time at Christmas. People use it in a song. It's on Christmas cards. You see it everywhere. And if you have a Bible, it'd be good for you to turn there with us or your phone, tablet, computer, whatever you have. And it just simply says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And for the past two weeks, we've talked about how his name was and is and will always be called wonderful. He's a wonderful God, and we know that he's a counselor. When nobody else can tell you what to do, God can and his word can because he's a counselor, and he's not just any type of counselor. He has the wisdom of all wisdom. In fact, we can pray. He, he has so much wisdom. The Bible says if you lack wisdom, you can call on him this counselor, and he can give you wisdom, and he gives it liberally. But today, we're going to talk about that third name mentioned there, and that's the fact that he's a mighty God. And before we read another passage that I want to share with you, I want to tell you this morning that we have so much that is usually going on at this time of year. People are busy with plans and obligations and, and, and all the things that go with Christmas as far as shopping and cooking and, and preparing and planning. But, but now you know that we are in a, in a place we've never been at before. We're also seeing things that we, we never thought we would see in our life. But regardless and in spite of everything that's happening, folks, I'm telling you that that name, Mighty God, that the Lord was given is still true, and it's holding true today. He's a mighty, mighty God in spite of all of it. He's a mighty God through all of it. He's a mighty God with you in the middle of it. And that won't ever change. Not one thing has shaken God. Not one thing has challenged Him with all of this going on. Not one thing has caught Him off guard. The Lord knew everything that would, would unfold this year a thousand years ago. He knew it when Adam and Eve was in the garden. He knew about 2020. And this mighty God has not been affected by it, and he won't be affected by it. If you would look over in the seventh chapter of Deuteronomy, you would read this right here. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you a mighty God and terrible. And then David said in the 50th chapter of Psalm, verse 1, the mighty God, even the Lord hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. And Jeremiah wrote in the 32nd chapter, Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompenseth the iniquities of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name. And Habakkuk said in Habakkuk 1 verse 12, Art Thou not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, mine Holy One, we shall not die. Somebody needs to say that this morning. We shall not die. And we can say that about our bodies, but we can say this about our souls and our spirit, and we know for a fact that we won't die. One day we will die. It is appointed unto man to die. But I'm telling you that the God I serve, the mighty God, is the same God that added 15 years to Hezekiah's life. And all we hear is death, death, and more death to come. But I'm telling you, the sustainer of my soul, the captain of my salvation, he's a mighty God, and he's able to do what nobody else can promise you in a vaccine or any kind of timeline or in a government or anything else. He's a mighty God, and he's able to do it. And Habakkuk said, Art thou not from everlasting? O Lord, my God, mine holy one, we shall not die. O Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment. And O mighty God, 
thou hast established them for correction. He is a mighty God. I said this earlier in a prayer that he's not a God that somebody made out of gold with their hands. He's not a God that somebody uh, self-appointed and called themselves God. He's God. He always has been God. He always will be God. And he's not just a mediocre, predictable, uh, average God. He's a mighty God. We might be having mighty hard times right now, somebody said, but it doesn't matter. If you belong to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, his name is a beautiful name. Then you belong to a mighty God that's able to do something about your mighty hard time you're going through with. God is not afraid of what's happening in this earth, nor is he afraid of what's going on in your life and my life. But he's not just a mighty God. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 63 that this mighty God is actually mighty to save. Who is this? That cometh from Edom, Isaiah said, with dyed garments from Basra, that this that is glorious in his apparel, travailing in the greatness of his strength. Who is this? And it says, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. You may be in a situation where you're married to someone or you know someone who has uh, entertain sin again or it looks like there's no way this person can be saved or you yourself may be a child of God but you may feel like now I'm in over my head I don't know what to do I've prayed I've fasted I've given to the church I've been faithful and it looks like now it's all still about to cave in on me I want to tell you that this mighty God that God loved us 2,000 years ago to send to us in the form of his son our Savior he is mighty to save not only the lost of lost, but he's mighty to save you in your dilemma and in your world and what's going on. He's not only a mighty God that's mighty to save, but the Bible says he's got a mighty hand over in Deuteronomy 26. It actually reads, And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders and many people want to hand out and I understand that we get that all the time here you probably hear that and a lot of people need a handout but they don't need a handout of money or food a lot of people need a hand of love a hand of grace and a hand of mercy and a, a lot of people need a hand of help and another one, a hand of hope. And Jesus Christ came to this earth because you and I, we run out of resources. We run out of patience. We run out of time, we say. We run out of all the things that it seems like society needs right now. But mighty God sent forth a mighty Savior down here that's mighty to say, and he has a mighty hand. And whatever you are going through in this life right now, this Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, that came down here on this earth, his hand is able to reach farther down than you could ever go in this life. And he does that because he loves you just like he did when he was in that manger 2,000 years ago. He's a mighty God. He's mighty to save. He's got a mighty hand. But there's something else about this God, this Savior, this Son that was sent down here to you and I. And that is that he has mighty power. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. In Psalm 106, it says, Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake. Listen, if you belong to God this morning, Jesus is the love of your life. I don't care what's happening in your world that seems like you're out of hope, nothing else can be done. The Lord is not going to let the righteous be forsaken. He's not going to let his seed beg for bread. And there's something else. He's also a God that cares about his name and if you wear his name he will do whatever he has to do to glorify his name in the middle of your pain and your circumstances and he said he will not only take care of these people you and I and save us for his name's sake that he might make his mighty power known God's not out of mighty power folks he's able to use his mighty power to rescue you today to rescue the world to rescue the church that seems like we can't win now it's bigger than us I want to stop and say that that's the biggest lie hell could tell you right now is that the church is gone. See, you're not even meeting this week. But I'm reminding you like I did last week. 
He's just not a good liar. He's the father of all lies, and he can tell you lie after lie after lie. In fact, the only thing he knows how to do is lie. He will have to tell one lie to try to cover up another lie, and he's telling so many lies right now, it's not even funny. And what's so sad about this is what I just shared last week. The body of Christ is eating up a lot of the lies that are straight from the devil. And that comes from a lack of being in the Word of God and walking in the Spirit like the Bible tells us. We are not ignorant of this day and time. And the mighty power of God is still ready to be unleashed on this earth. And it's only going to come through the body of Christ, folks. And we've got to understand what happened 2,000 years ago. God sent Jesus, yes, for my sins. God sent Jesus, yes, for my healing. Yes, for my heartache. Yes, for my bad days and my days that I wished I wasn't alive. But he also sent Jesus so that he could show himself strong through his children, through his mighty power. And God's ready to do that again now more than ever because this world thinks that it's all wrapped up and that the world's calling all the shots and the church is going to shut up and be silent and they're going to silence the church. But he said the gates of hell will not prevail against this mighty God. And today, if you feel powerless, I've got great news for you. Hallelujah. He's got mighty power. In Luke 9, he records this in the 43rd verse. He says this right here. And they were all amazed. You know what had happened? Jesus had spoke to a demon that was inside of a boy that the disciples prayed for. Nothing happened. Same disciples. I need some help in here. I can hear a lot of talking. Y'all, 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 y'all got to help me. I want to tell you this that the Bible says that when he came up and he saw that what they did didn't do any good, he used these words on his own disciples. He said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. That's how he addressed them not being able to walk in his mighty power. It wasn't a problem on God's part that he had to fuel back up that he had to run the treadmill a little more. It's their faith affected the mighty power of God working in their life. The Bible says that when Jesus called the demon out of the little boy, he went on to say that these people are about to see something. And he did that for the reason I'm about to read to you. He said they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But they wondered they wondered and a lot of people will wonder why is God not doing this in my life why is God not using me why is this not happening in my church why is this not happening in our ministry and that's because we've got to get our mind on the mighty God that the Lord sent down here in the form of Jesus Christ that he lives in me and it's in him I live and I move and I have my being And that same resurrection power, that mighty power from the mighty God is living inside of the body of a child of God. And that's what we've got to look to right now, folks. We've got to look to this because that's the only hope this world has right now. Ephesians 1, 19 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to to the working of his mighty power. And I want you to know, folks, that this power was known through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's power, power. You know where I'm going. There is wonder-working power. Where at? In the blood of the Lamb. And he came as a lamb led to the slaughter. He was born as a babe in a manger. He lived and he ministered. And for 33 years, he was about his father's business. But on that 33rd year, he would be nailed to a cross and his blood would be shed. But it wasn't just any blood and it wasn't for no purpose at all. His blood meant that I could be saved because as the old song says, there was 
mighty, mighty, wonder-working power in that blood that's still available today. And God is still moving today, folks. And he has mighty power to all of us that believe. And we hear a lot about believing at Christmas. Children hear a lot about believing. But if you believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God, if you believe in his mighty power, there is power that comes to us. Paul said, there is power to usward. That means that God does not restrict us to his power. The same Jesus that came down here is not a stingy, selfish Jesus. He came so that you could have abundant life, but you could also have a powerful life. And that's why his name is so powerful. That's why his blood is so powerful. That's why his arm is so powerful. That's why his hand is so powerful. Because he came in power and glory and in might and that's the power that we need to be operating in today in the body of Christ as children of the most high God what a mighty God we serve I know the angels bow before him I also know heaven and earth adore him what a mighty God we serve and I think there's one young lady a teenage girl that summed this up as good as anybody over in the first chapter of Luke this has probably already been read or acted out or shown or sung about many times in the past couple of weeks. It's part of the Christmas story. It was Mary that testified to this mighty God with a mighty hand, with a mighty power. He's a great God. He's an awesome God. He's a good God. And she summed it up when she sang the words of this in a song found in verse 4. She said this in a song. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things and holy is his name. And that's what I want to leave you with this morning. Is he mighty in your life? Has he done a great thing in your life? He is a God that's full of greatness. He's a God that's full of goodness. And he's done a great thing in my life Why he saved me many times. And I've told you several times about when I should have died. One time I know of in 1984. But praise be to God, he spared me and he saved me. And great things he has done. And I want to make it my business. I want to make it my agenda to make sure I let the world know and hold is his name for the rest of my life because he's no the son of God was not born inside of me like he was Mary I didn't give birth to him and nobody else did like Mary did but I'm telling you this he's done a great thing for me when he died on the cross when he shed his blood and when he resurrected and when he said to me Opie swells I'm going away and I'm going to prepare a place for you oh folks he's done a great thing for me don't ask me what I want for Christmas I'll tell you I've already got what I want his name is Jesus and holy 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 is his name and I hope you feel the same way this morning that he's done a great thing for you whether you're sick or whether you feel like you can conquer a mountain right now you need to know about this great God that loved you so much that he sent a mighty God to you and holy is his name and if you will tell him that if you turn your focus and your mind and your attention on worshiping him and telling him how great he is how holy is his name why I know the devil hates that personally I know he'll flee I had myself a great service in here all alone yesterday just me and God you know how it came about me just coming in here and saying holy is your name thank you Lord for all your goodness I didn't ask him for anything I just thanked him for what he's already done the great thing he's already done inside of me that's why I'm not really moved with COVID whether I'm sick with it or not if I die from it it's not going to own me now I'm not going to give it any platform time I'm going to give it the name that's a holy name COVID's not a holy name I'm going to talk about the one that's high and lifted up and his train fills the temple. Hallelujah. Holy is his name. And he's done a great thing. And it may look bad. It may look negative. It may look like it's all over with. We're just waiting on the hearse to pull up. But I got news for you and the rest of this world that we live in. His name is great. His name is holy. He's mighty in everything he does. And he's my God. And I love him so much this morning. Hallelujah, Father. I give you praise today. 
I thank you because you are a holy, mighty, wonderful God. I thank you because you are a good God. I thank you, Lord, because you are not a slack God. I thank you, Lord, that you are mighty with your hand. I thank you, Lord, that you are mighty in my life and you've done great things. I thank you, Lord, that you are able to do exceedingly abundant above everything that I could ever hope mass. I thank you, Lord, that you have a great hand and you can pull anybody out of any amount of quicksand they feel like they're in. Lord, your power is still mighty and you're able to do mighty powerful things even in this day and age, oh Lord, and help us to rend our hearts and not our garments and give you the glory that's due your name, Father. And we thank you that you loved us enough to send us a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, and glory to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you before we, we go home. I know you're at home, but I want to pray for you before we go to that home because you may not be you may not be in a place where you're ready to go home I've, I've read this Bible and I've read it very carefully and and I know that where we're living folks every bit of the things that we've always heard about is so true I thought that it was a great thing and it was three years ago when my mother was able to go home on Christmas Day but I don't see any reason at all why the bride of Christ may very well not go home Christmas this year sometime during this season everything is lined up not that we needed a sign not that we needed to have some kind of proof, but, but God's been so good to reveal to us and, and let us see what's happening. And, and I don't want anybody that's listening or watching us today, I don't want you to be left out. In fact, it would be a shame for you to sit through this whole service or any service and not how, know how to get home. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I may not understand everything or anything in that Bible he's holding. But I just believe, I believe that you can save me. I believe you are mighty enough to save me. I believe that you are great enough to wash away my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And, and today I want to give you my life, not just my sin, but I want to give you my life. I want to give you my pain, my family, my frustration. I, I want to give you every, my insecurities. I just want you to have it because it's destroying me. And if you do that, he does just that. That's why we say he's a mighty God because he can do something about sin, sure, but he can do something about everything else. That's why his name is mighty. And so if... If I'm talking to you, all you have to do is say, Lord, would you forgive me? I repent. There's things that people are buying other people for Christmas, but I need you, Jesus, and I need you right now. You don't have to wait to Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. The Bible said in Revelation 3, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. The Lord's knocking right now. He's knocking very hard right now because He knows what's happening in this earth. And God wants to save you. That's why unto us, when he said unto us, a son is given, a child is given, a savior is given, a counselor is given, a wonderful God, a mighty God, an everlasting father is given, a prince of peace is given unto us. That means he was giving him for you too. And if you would just let him in, you'll find out things may not change the way other people think that they should have changed in your life. But I guarantee you this. If you do, we've got a, we've got a banner over at the school in the cafeteria. It says Psalm 34, just taste and see that the Lord is good. 
And if you would just taste the Lord Jesus right now, you would see above everything you've eaten or will eat for Christmas, by far, He will outweigh it all. And He's wanting to save you. And if you prayed that prayer in any way, shape, or form, all you have to do is text the word SAVED to the number on the screen, 910-411-99, or you can get to it on uh, your web browser. And we will send you some information. There's some immediate help. We don't want money. We're not trying to solicit you to church. We j we're just trying to finish our course as a church and help people find their way home because we believe the Lord's about to return at any moment. So I want to pray for not just you, but all of you that have been worshiping with us today. And we know that God is mighty. He's mighty in this earth right now. We've just got to align ourselves where we can see it. We've got to give Him the glory to His name because His name is holy. And I want to leave you with a prayer. Father, I thank you today, God, for everyone you've blessed us with to be a part of their life. I thank you, oh God, that you have the wonderful words of life here, Lord. Everything else will pass away, but not your words, Lord. So we can, we can be, Lord, comforted with these words and we can walk in these words and we can hold them close to our hearts because you, O oh Lord, you, O oh Lord, are a mighty God. And I pray, Lord, that you would keep people safe, that our minds would stay on you, Lord, that we would prove the enemy wrong, that he can't put anything on TV or on social media that's going to get our attention or our tongue, our talk, more than your word does, Lord. So I pray that you would let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, God bless you. We love you, and we will see you Wednesday night, live stream at 7 o'clock. Nothing can stand again